In this video, you will learn how to use your Sony A6000 series camera as a webcam using the Elgato Cam Link 4K. This process is the same for the A6100, which is what I'm using, the A6400 and the A6600. They all work the same way, uh, especially using the Elgato. So no matter which camera you're using, uh, the setup is still the same. So if you want to drastically improve your video quality like this, uh, you're going to learn all the gear you need, the camera settings, and how to actually set it up to run through your computer. If you'd like to see what the video quality looks like against a normal conventional webcam like this Logitech C920, jump down to the video description. There's a link there to my previous video comparing the two different qualities, as well as looking at the standard lens that it comes with the Sony versus the Sigma 16 millimeters, which is what I am using right now. I'm Jimmy from jimmyrose.me and Content Snare. And if you'd like to learn to become more productive through automation, time management, and new epic tools that will save you time, hit that subscribe button below for my regular videos. But let's start with digging into the gear that you need. So this is everything you need. So obviously we have the uh, camera itself. This is the Sony A6100. Uh, I've already mounted the tripod uh, mount on the bottom there. So obviously that's not part of the camera. Um, this is the lens that comes standard with the Sony uh, and I've upgraded to the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 uh, lens. So jump back to the other video if you want to compare what those two look like. So this one, the standard lens is actually pretty good, uh, but this one will allow you to get that really cool blurred background effect um, that you saw just before. And you can compare these side by side uh, in my previous video. Then of course, uh, we have the Elgato Cam Link. So this is the device that allows you to connect HDMI on one side out into USB into your computer. So um, then obviously we need to connect this uh, to the computer. So to get from the camera to the uh, Elgato Cam Link, the uh, Sony has a micro HDMI port here. So uh, you're going to need a cable that goes uh, micro HDMI to normal HDMI. So I got a three meter one just so I could run it all the way around the back of my computer with no issues. And after that, I'll, the cam link into the computer, it actually comes with this little USB cable here as well. So you don't need to put uh, that directly into the back of your computer because obviously it's quite thick. Um, so yeah, that we're gonna go camera through the cable uh, into the cam link uh, into the computer. And then you need to obviously power the camera. Now it comes with a battery, of course, that you would put into here. But the problem is you don't wanna to have to be recharging this all the time when you are using it as a webcam. So your option here is actually an AC adapter that gives it kind of like a fake battery. The rest of this stuff over here is just to power this uh, fake battery. So we've got, you know, wall to the power supply, power supply uh, connects into this little guy here. Uh, and then the battery itself goes into the camera. Now here's a little trick for you that I didn't realize at first. If you get that battery in there, there's a little thing uh, here, a little piece of rubber that you can pull to the side so that cable can come through and you can still close the battery door, which is nice. Um, at first I thought that battery door was gonna have to hang open all the time, but um, with that, it will sit in there uh, permanently and actually close, so that's nice. From there, it's pretty obvious. We're going to go from the HDMI cable into the little door on the side there, run that into the cam link, find the other end of that. So it's gonna go into there and then obviously that uh, into the back of the computer. So there's only uh, two cables running into the camera at all times. You've got the HDMI there and the permanent battery. And then we obviously have to attach the lens. So I'm just gonna take that piece off the cover and on the back of the Sigma, take that cover off. You line up the white dot here with the white dot uh, there on the Sony and just screw that in. So uh, we're good to go. If you do want to take that off, you've got to hit that little switch there to take the lens off. And that's it for the camera itself. So I'm just push that to the side. 
And now we're gonna have a look at the actual mounting. So I've chosen this uh, on stage. It's actually a microphone stand. Uh, on stage is the brand. I like it because it's really solid and sits there uh, on the desk uh, rather than having like an arm that moves around with the camera. You can obviously use a mount kind of like my microphone is on here. So it could move around freely. However, the camera with this giant lens on it is quite heavy. So you'll need a fairly heavy duty one just to hold that weight up. So that's why I've gone with this uh, kind of stands. Now it has a five, eight inch mount on it because this is made for microphones. So if you do use a stand like this, you'll need a couple of other things. So this is a uh, five, eight to one quarter. So this is quarter inch camera mount on the top and the 5.8 uh, on the bottom. So that can go straight on the top of that mount. Now you could actually go straight into the camera from that mount there. However, uh, I chose to go with a tripod ball mount uh, on the top, just so I have more flexibility to move that camera around and actually change the angle and that kind of thing. It also gives it an extra bit of height because uh, this one isn't, this stand isn't super high. So it's good to have that little bit extra bit of height. Now I messed up a little bit here in that this thing actually has a, 3 8 mount rather than the quarter that I bought. But uh, luckily they obviously um, expected dummies like me to buy this sort of thing. So it actually came with this tiny little extra mount here that converts the 3 8 to the uh, to the one quarter. So um, you can actually just whack that straight on the top of this one. And then that goes uh, directly into the bottom of the ball mount. Now back to the camera. So this is the top of the tripod mount that I've already just screwed into the, the camera here. So then it's just a matter of sliding that into the ball head and tightening it up. So let's have a look at the full setup. So this is what it looks like all ready to go on the stand on the desk. The power, the HDMI uh, ready for the Elgato to be plugged into the computer and the uh, battery to be plugged into the wall. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Once you are all set up, the next step is to actually just come and download the utility to run your Elgato cam link. So the link for that is here. It'll be in the notes below, but um, once you're here, you just select the product. So you're gonna choose the cam link 4K and whether you're on Windows or Mac, and you're gonna grab this 4K capture utility here. Download that and install it, and it's gonna look like this. So you can see here, uh, we it says no signal on the camera itself, but now I'm just gonna go ahead and turn that camera on. And there we go, so we've got signal and it's working. There's just a couple of settings you might have to change on your camera. So I'm gonna flip back to the Logitech now to show you those. Now first, quickly, you just wanna make sure that the knob on the top of the camera here is switched to video before you move ahead. So you can see right now, the camera is actually throwing through a bunch of other information in the HDMI feed that is coming into my computer. So you can see the audio levels there and the uh, aperture and the um, shutter speed, all that sort of stuff. You don't obviously want that in your final video. So one just quick thing I will mention is make sure if you're using the Sigma lens, you can adjust the aperture using the knob on the top of the camera on the very top right. So you wanna make sure that that's turned right down to 1.4 and sometimes when you turn the camera off and on again it will reset so before you record videos you just want to make sure that you are on f 1.4 on the bottom there if you want that cool blurred background effect but i'm going to hit the menu button on the camera here and you'll see uh the settings what you want to do is come through to this screen here setup three so you can see uh at the top here we've got different uh menus you want to come along to setup Come down and go across to setup three. And this is where the settings for the HDMI feed are. So first one is click that and you're gonna to wanna to turn info display to off and also check your resolution. This is the one I'm using because I'd like to output the full quality uh, when it's available. You're gonna turn the HDMI info display to off and then you can see it's actually no longer projecting the settings through the HDMI feed or any of that information around the side. I'm just gonna quickly turn that on uh, 
just for a second, just to show you another setting. I go back, which is the menu button. Uh, and down here, the 4K output select. It should be on this one by default, but make sure it's on this one. I was mucking around with uh, the HDMI only, and it was uh, causing some issues for me. Um, your mileage may vary on that, but I just had to make sure this one was selected. So I'll quickly just go back and turn the info back to off. Spin the camera around and we are good to go. And just for a quick demo, if I change that aperture out to a higher number, you can see there the background is no longer blurred. That's why it's good to make sure you've got that knob set uh, to 1.4 before you record any videos. But yeah, obviously a huge upgrade uh, from the webcam. At this point, I haven't played around with any color settings on the camera at all. This is literally just the default setup with that HDMI info turned off and uh, the Sigma 16 millimeter 1.4 lens. Everything else right now is default. If you do have any problems after you have plugged in, just have a look through the settings on this 4K capture utility up here. You might wanna make sure that the format is set right. Like you might wanna play with the settings, the frame rates and qualities here. Um, I left it on the default, which seems to be working well for me. Uh, you've got devices and picture settings here. If you do want to play with any of this, it is all available. This is where you change the actual recording format. So yeah, just have a look through here. If anything uh, is going wrong, you might need to play with some stuff there. And bear in mind that you don't actually need to use that CamLink 4K utility to record. So now that all that's set up, it actually just shows up as another webcam on your computer. So this is the Camtasia recorder that I use to create these videos. You can see I can switch between uh, my Logitech and the cam link just as if they were two different cameras and then I can go ahead and record. Same with the built-in Windows camera utility. So right now you can see the cam link here. I just changed switch camera and we're switching between the Logitech and the cam link. So that's just showing up as a, another camera on the computer. So it's very easy to change. Now, one final thing worth mentioning, just in case you run into the same problem I have now, looking at around on the internet, it doesn't look like many people have had this issue, but I get a buzzing sound through my speakers when I plug the camera in. And it's not the camera's fault and it's not the Elgato's fault from what I can tell. It's actually audio interference coming through the AC battery adapter. So if I just use the normal battery instead of the AC adapter, then I don't get the buzzing. And I think it's only because my speakers are really old. They're analog old Logitech speakers and I get the buzzing. It's not in the recording. It only comes through the speakers. So it's some kind of uh, ground interference. I believe believe. Um, and now there are devices out there, USB devices called a ground loop isolator, which I believe will actually work in this case. I'm waiting for confirmation from Elgato, but um, it should remove that buzzing sound if it is actually coming through the power supply like I believe it is. So right now it sounds like it's coming through the power supply, through the camera, back through the Elgato into my computer out of the uh, headphone jack and into my speakers. So yeah, there's a lot of things going on there, but um, I think the ground loop isolator will help. That's it. Now you have seen how to connect your Sony A6000 series camera as a webcam. If you have any questions at all, please drop in a comment below and I'll see if I can help you out. And also, if you'd like to learn to become more productive through automation, time management, and just cool software and tools that will save you time, hit that subscribe button below to get notified when I release a new video. That's it. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.